Today's episode is super inspiring from both a business and entrepreneurial standpoint and the ability to make massive social impact through that medium and also uh, very enlightening in terms of help for those who struggle with high blood sugar all the way from prediabetes to type 2 diabetes. My guest is Sammy Inkinen. He's the CEO and co-founder of Verta Health. I've been a, you know, Verta, if you've been in the keto world, you've probably heard of Verta Health. Um, Doctors Jeff Fullick and Stephen Finney, they have done a ton of research in that field. Um, so they're part of Verta Health. And yeah, they are pioneers in transforming metabolic health through personalized nutrition and one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, which I really learned about how they're doing that and working with both employers and insurance companies. And in this episode, I was really happy to hear um, what Sammy's been able to help out with in terms of making help more accessible for people reversing type 2 diabetes yes we can reverse it you don't have to be on insulin forever you know so yeah please take a listen find out what they're offering um i love sammy's personal story too so i asked him to share that uh, this insanely fit high performing athlete who found out he was on the path to type 2 diabetes and insulin resistant, which caused him to come out of his uh, intentional, he was hoping to retire a little bit from entrepreneurship, but he really felt like he had to help with this. One thing about him is he um, was the co-founder of Trulia, the real estate marketplace. If you're familiar with that, sold that to Zillow, was ready to kind of chill. And then this whole thing happened and he's like, okay, I got to help. So super grateful that he has brought his business skills to the holistic health holistic medicine table because it's really amazing what verta health is doing if you want to see visit their website it's just verta so it's v-i-r-t-a health.com and you can also follow them on social media they share a lot of great information there as well so check them out and yeah hope you guys enjoy here is sammy Inkinen. Okay, so Sammy, it's super nice to get to meet you and talk a little bit before we started recording because I'm definitely familiar with Verta Health. Um, and probably most people who have gone through a big keto phase of their life have, if they haven't heard of, you know, Dr. Finney and Dr. Volick directly, they've definitely been the receivers of some of their research and work. You know, I always appreciate seeing them at conferences and seeing what they're up to. They've done some of the most important research work in the ketogenic diet field and deeper metabolic health. So super appreciate you guys. And you know, you're the, the, the business leader over there at Verda and just took that on in 2020, you said, right. And I well, wanted to hear how you yeah. got here because your story is very powerful. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, thank you so much, Tara, for for having me here. And yes, uh, I'm co-founder and CEO of Verta Health. And actually, we started working on the concept already 2014. So that's oh, wow. gosh, okay. 10, 10, 10 years and really nine years, I would say, uh, mm. full time. But yeah, maybe maybe just take a couple of steps back and, and answer your question. Well, first of all, uh, what we are trying to do at Verta, and then I'll, I'll share how I yeah. ended up there myself. The big picture for us is, I like to say, we are solving the health epidemic of our generation, which sadly is type 2 diabetes and obesity. Yeah. Uh, or we label as type 2 diabetes and obesity, but more broadly, it's poor metabolic health. And public usually knows it as type 2 diabetes and obesity. And as I'm sure you and your audience very well knows, sadly, we've been treating these diseases for the last, I don't know, three decades by addressing symptoms, mainly with medications, as opposed to addressing the underlying driver of type 2 diabetes and obesity. And so mm -hmm. what we are trying to do at Verda is to fundamentally reverse both type 2 diabetes and obesity uh, through nutrition. And, and that's kind of what we've been doing for the last decade. And our publicly stated mission is reverse type 2 diabetes in 100 million people. And under the hood, uh, yes, it's individualized nutrition and carbohydrate restriction plays a key part. But then the other element is we deliver the entire treatment virtually and use technology, software, and then medical providers as well and our coaches to take care of our patients. And mm -hmm. I emphasize medical providers because a lot of the patients we treat have type 2 diabetes and might already be on insulin. So we have to be able to safely de-prescribe mm -hmm. and titrate mm -hmm. them off of the, the medications. So that's kind of the broad picture on what we are trying to do at, at, at Verta Health. But if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll share kind of how I ended up here because 
Um, it was sort of an accidental stumble that got me here and, and got me interested in this space. So very, very briefly, my background, I grew up in Finland, a physicist by training, started my career in a nuclear power plant in Finland, like way back when. Mm -hmm. So nothing to do with diabetes, obesity, or healthcare. <laughs> um, then came to America 2003. So I've been here now for about 21 years. And my professional tool actually has been software. So the hammer in my back pocket has always been tech. And so right after coming to America, I started a company called Trulia, this online real estate marketplace, Trulia, which then almost a decade later went public and then now merged with Zillow Group 2014. So that was kind of my background. So nothing to do with healthcare, nothing to do with, you know, trying to address diabetes and obesity. And at the time when Zillow acquired Trulia 2014, I thought, wow, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for uh, 14 years nonstop. It's phenomenal, but it's also kind of like you don't have other life. And yeah. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done for the time being. But what happened to me was, despite the fact that throughout those Trulia years, I was doing a lot of triathlons. I mentioned you live in Hawaii. I did the Hawaii Ironman World Championship seven times. Uh, I ended up winning uh, world championships in my age group in triathlon. So I was very fit, obviously. Uh, despite all that, I discovered that I was pre-diabetic myself and on my way to obviously developing type 2 diabetes. And, uh, you know, to me, especially as a physicist, I was like, no compute, no compute. This just doesn't <laughs> make any freaking sense. Right. And uh, it was through that process and frustration and quite frankly, anger, I I met Dr. Stephen Finney and Dr. Jeff Volek and their research and, and got to know them and understood that obviously I was wrong. It, it's not just how much you eat or staying lean, it's what you eat. And metabolic disease, diabetes and obesity is a disease. It's not like you just choose or lack of willpower. And then secondly, discovered that what you eat can also potentially reverse obesity and type 2 diabetes without, you know, willpower and massive personal mm -hmm. efforts. And I, I I said, we probably don't have to help millions of people like me, but there's millions or hundreds of millions of people who are struggling from obesity and type 2 diabetes who don't know any better. And maybe we should start a company and try to go and help people truly suffering from type 2 diabetes and obesity. And that kind of pulled me in and I said, let's go. That was nice. 2014. And here we are about 10 years later. Ah, uh, well, thank reverse you. diabetes. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, clarifying what you guys are up to. And thank you for coming out of your, what, six month retirement, you thought you're, <laughs> you thought you were done. Um, it's really appreciated, you know, because there's so many of us in the holistic health world that are not trained in business. And you know, it's like, I want to help people get healthy. So you get trained in all of the actual health aspects of it, but we really need people who are experienced mm -hmm. in business to be able to come in and be able to reach more broadly, especially mm -hmm. with something like this, that is by and far, you know, I mean, if you want to look, if you want to lump obesity and type two diabetes together, you know, definitely up there and count on your fingers, uh, uh, you know, the top issues that we're facing in health today. And thank you for sharing your personal experience because that awareness, I mean, that's, it's such an extreme example. You, we always hear like, oh no, you can be thin and healthy looking and still be pre-diabetic, but to have that image, it's like, you're like winning the world championship yeah, for right. triathlons for your age division, like that level of fit, you can still be pre-diabetic. That picture is just really needed because there's a lot of people that they don't even check, you know, most yeah. people just have no idea what their blood sugar is like at all. So thank you for opening up that, uh, you know, it's like, okay, if you're obese, like definitely look, but Hey, even if you're winning world championship Ironmans, you also need to look, you know, 100%. <laughs> okay. So, um, so awesome that, you know, wherever your life path took you that you stumbled across <laughs> <laughs> Two of the, you know, I'm sure you sought out the best, right? And you really did, you know, they Dr. Bullock and Dr. Finney are top of the keto world, the metabolic function world, you know, definitely uh, really appreciate them. 
I'm curious what you learned and what others might learn about what is at the root of this that they might not be aware of, right? So whether you're pre-diabetic or you already have type two diabetes, you know, what kind of things do they, do people need to be aware of from your angle that you're seeing people just aren't thinking about? Yeah, yeah. Okay. First of all, I, I have to uh, thread lightly and carefully here uh, for, for two main reasons. One is, you know, I, I do have two master's degrees, but I'm not a medical doctor yeah. and I don't play one on the internet. So I'll try to be very careful, like what kind of clinical statements I make. And then the second reason is, uh, you know, in my role as, as founder and CEO of Verda, we try to be very evidence-based and we've published dozen yeah. peer root papers on the Verda and run a five-year prospective clinical trial. So I try to be very sort of evidence-based uh, in in whatever I, I say here. Um, but I think, uh, well, first of all, people who are sort of might have poor metabolic health. So I, I think generally it's it's very helpful to do uh, annual physicals and blood tests and see kind of what's what's happening there, obviously. And, you know, there's the typical metabolic health panel, whether that's blood sugar A1C or your lipid panel, triglycerides and, and inflammation that are usually for people who are developing metabolic disease, insulin resistance may not initially feel much and maybe you've gained a few extra pounds and so forth. So you mm -hmm. might be able to see from your sort of annual blood tests that if you're headed to the right or the wrong wrong direction. So this, just kind of a general point there. Um, then in terms of um, what we've learned and what we've seen among our patients, and now we have hundreds of thousands of patient years of data and experience treating nice. patients. Um, I think a couple of things, and this is sort of a, in no particular order. I'd say number one is this misconception, particularly by fit people and people living on the coast and maybe on the island of Hawaii, is, is, is some people is, is that it truly is not a personal choice. So people who are metabolically unhealthy or let's say massively obese or even morbidly obese, I haven't yet met a single patient we've treated who knowingly have decided to develop type 2 diabetes or become obese. Like there's this misconception by people who are lean or fit or healthy or whatever, that it's, it's you're lazy. It's your mm -hmm. personal choice. You just don't have the kind of the mm -hmm. grit to take care of yourself. That is complete bullshit. Like nice. literally, there's not a single person who has that. In fact, practically all of the patients that we've treated when they come in, they've tried like five to 15 diets. And, you know, usually they work for three months on the wedding photo or whatever, and then willpower mm -hmm. runs out and they've just struggled. So I'd say mm -hmm. that's a one thing that's a huge misconception that we think of it as like, oh, whatever you put into your mouth is a personal choice. Uh, it, it's mm. to some extent it is, but then when you're metabolically unhealthy, you're craving, your hunger, like right. Right. You just cannot. So I'd, I'd say that's one thing. Mm. The second thing is that as we start treating patients and changing their nutrition, um, it's usually like a miraculous experience to our patients that they can quickly switch their metabolism from say burning sugar to burning fat to feeling satisfied, not having hunger, not having cravings. Mm -hmm. um, it, people cannot believe what's possible nutritionally. Uh, and now we have these GLP-1 drugs like Gozempic, Wigovi and so forth. I hear the same stories from people who take these drugs uh, saying, I can't believe this, I'm not hungry. I can't believe I was a whatever yes. sugarholic and now I'm not craving, right. you know, Who the gummy bears or whatever cookies. <laughs> and I'm like, right. that's awesome. Like clearly something changed, but we can achieve the same results nutritionally. So that's a sort of a second thing. And it is right. mind blowing to most of our patients. Uh, and then usually that's followed by almost like a frustration and anger, especially if it's someone who's lived with type two diabetes for say 20 years and, you know, they change the way they feel about food, they start losing weight. And within like 30 days, we get them off of insulin and they go like, this is ridiculous. Right. Why did I suffer 20 years? I was 80 pounds overweight. I couldn't even play with my kids or grandkids. And you guys fixed me in like 45 days. Why didn't anyone tell? So that's kind of the second thing. Um, and then I'll mention third one. And then I'll pause this. Um, from a behavior change and nutritional perspective, um, what it takes to restore your metabolic health, kind of lose the initial 
excess weight and get to like say from sickness to health sickness mm -hmm. to health what it takes to do that is different from what it takes to then maintain that for two years three years five years six years seven years from a behavior from a yeah. um everything perspective and even like what we do with our patients is very different the first three to 12 months depending on how sick someone is coming in the way we help them is very different from kind of like how do we give them the skills and tools to succeed and maintain that for you know for the rest of the life hopefully mm, those are so many gems let's 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 break <laughs> into those a little bit thank you okay first of all thank you for the um empathy the you know i always think when i hear these kind of really rough mindsets of like oh you just don't have enough willpower and you're just lazy and all that stuff and I, you can, as a coach, you know, as someone who does this every day, it's like, you can clearly see that this person has a lot of metabolic dysfunction. And I always just want to see, I just want to like take that judgmental person and, right. you know, bless their hearts. And I just want to like drop them into that other person's body and be like, okay, watch you, you do it. Let me see you do it. Oh, wow. The sugar cravings are out of control because you aren't aware of how your blood sugar is spiking. You aren't aware of how neurotransmitters get boosted by sugars and you aren't aware of how low your dopamine drops on type two diabetes. And so you literally are like your body's trying not to die and also just have the brain power to go on with life. Like, I'm like, I just like to drop you in their physiology for a minute and see how you do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, so thanks for that. And then, um, in terms of, um, what was the second one you were saying? Um, oh, the, the sort of unbelievable rapid changes in yes, people, like, how did this yes. happen? I've been struggling for 30 years and I can't believe, you know, yeah. now I have a natural normal relationship with food. I'm losing weight. I'm getting off medications. This is insane. What happened? Miracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That, I mean, that's totally been my experience too. And I would say, you know, to just kind of put it plainly, like the more obese a client I have, right. The more metabolic dysfunction they've experienced, like the more dramatic that mm -hmm. is. Right. It's like yes. kind of when I get somebody who's over 300 pounds, yeah. you know, pushing 400 pounds, like they're like, who am I? Like, how, mm -hmm. how am I not craving stuff? Like what, you know, and it's to see that kind of confidence brew in them from like simple understanding of how the body works, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's just so such a beautiful thing to see. And I'd say it's probably my, my favorite yeah. thing about yeah. bringing someone through keto is like kind of waiting for it. I'm like waiting for the text, you know, or waiting for the check-in call. How's it going? They're like, so good. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. So I love that. Um, and let's see your third one. Um, is no. what it takes to have the initial changes is, is kind of a different okay. thing from sustaining and succeeding for life, uh, which is obviously essential for. Yeah. Thank you. I, I guess I need to go through another keto phase because you're <laughs> <laughs> recalling all those way quicker than me. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit. And I'd like to kind of, um, discuss a little bit, like what it is that you guys are, you know, doing with people, like what the experience uh, is for people. If they're coming to Alberta, you know, who do you work with? Is it mostly people who already have type two? Uh -huh. Is it, you know, like, so let's kind of go into the experience of working with you guys. Like, what is that journey like and who might benefit the most from that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first in terms of just how did the mechanics of the even the business work because it relates to who, who we take in primarily our model is is such that we work with payers that is self-insured employers anything from you know ups nice. papa john's u.s foods okay. united airlines like mm. 500 or so large employers in america as well as health plans like your blue cross blue shield of hawaii blue shield mm. of california humana some government organizations like the Veterans Administration, even uh, state employee groups. Mm -hmm. So they are our clients. So from a yes. business perspective, we go to them and say, or ask, how's type 2 diabetes and obesity? Is it very expensive for you? Are your members and employees suffering? And of course, everybody raises his hand. By the way, I say everybody because this is insane. More than 60%, more than 60% of American adults are either type 2 diabetes Wow. obesity overweight it's just like right. so anyway so it's not an exception yeah. that you suffer from poor metabolic health 
the great majority of American adults are explicitly metabolically unhealthy. So, but in any case, so these payers cover the cost of Verda and for individual members or employees who are then eligible through their payer, again, employee mm -hmm. or the health plan, mm -hmm. uh, it's free. So our treatment is, is completely free. Now, wow. if your employer health plan doesn't cover you, like, I, that sounds awesome. I, I, I want be that benefit. You can come to our website, Verda.com and sign up with your credit card and whatnot. So we do take cash pay patients, mm -hmm. but back to your earlier comment, it's important to have businesses try to scale and have massive impact. Our primary way of trying to impact and help millions of people is to make this type of a treatment free for anyone in America living with type two diabetes or obesity through this mm -hmm. kind of a business model where kind of everybody wins. The yes. end user wins and then the payer makes money in the process, which, which by the way, is rare in U.S. healthcare where usually it's, here's a miracle treatment, it's very expensive, extends your, right. I don't know, cancer patient life by a year and it's a million dollars. And then there's this debate, should we cover or not? But in the case of, you know, eliminating type 2 diabetes, it's kind of beautiful because the payer makes money while making someone healthy. So what is what is there not to like? I, I, yeah. That's what I think about yeah. it. So anyway, so that's the model. So in terms of how, uh, what's the experience and, and who is eligible, the eligibility is always decided by the payer, but generally we offer our treatment to two types of folks. It's either someone with diagnosed type 2 diabetes or obesity. And okay. increasingly payers, employers, and helplines are covering the obesity treatment as well. When we originally started, it was happening less because there was less interest in investing into you know, weight loss and obesity treatment. Now the interest has gone through the roof and you might guess the reason, and the reason is the GLP-1 drugs, because mm -hmm. if the payer doesn't do the first thing, which is nutrition, they're on a hook for massive, massive cost of these GLP-1 drugs. I so see. generally when we work with payer, it's both, Mm -hmm. type 2 diabetes and, and obesity. So that means, you know, typically more than 50% of their member base or employer ba employee base gets free access to Verda. So, wow. so that's kind of who and how. And then in terms of the treatment, I'll, I'll give you the very fast version and then we can dive into any, any specifics. But one, we reach out to the eligibles. That could be an email or we send direct mail, done that in there in Hawaii and say, hey, your health plan is making this treatment available for you for free. If you want to take advantage of it, just go to vertahealth.com and sign up. So you come to our website, which is the door to our clinic, so to speak, online. You give your health history. And then after that, uh, once we have the data, you have a call with a live Verda employee, uh, an intake call where we kind of get a little bit of your health history and see if you willing and ready to embark on, on this journey. Then after that, uh, we get your lab results, either if they are sort of reason, we might be able to get it digitally from a health exchange, or you go to like LabCorp book quest that we get your metabolic panel. And then you have your first visit with one of our doctors, medical doctors. So that's kind of an intake call where we make the final plan and make sure you know you're healthy and if there's any specific issues we need to we need to deal with and of course you might wonder like why do you need to meet a doctor if we just use nutrition but again on average most of our patients we treat there's let's be honest there's three four chronic conditions as right. part of the bundle they might right. be on seven drugs three diabetes drugs hypertension drug antidepressant this and that right so right. we are medically liable and we want to make sure we deliver phenomenally safe care so we need to know all that stuff right. before we start doing anything with you so then after that we'll send you a verda starter kit to your home where we have remote monitoring tools so we can track your blood sugar your blood ketones your weight if you're on hypertensive medications your blood pressure so we get all that data remotely you know, through the cloud or through the app to, to our system. So you get that starter, starter kit and then we assign you a one-on-one -on -one coach. So although everything's sort of software and technology empowered, there's always human in the loop on our side. So you get a dedicated coach who kind of follows your journey forever. So it's mm -hmm. usually becomes a very tight personal relationship. And these are our full-time employees. We don't, I don't know, for better or worse, like if somebody mm -hmm. 
is a coach and wants to join, then you kind of have to become a Verda employee to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then this coach becomes your kind of primary point of contact. And then the treatment starts. And again, I'd say 90% of our treatment is nutrition, uh, but highly individualized. Yes, carbohydrate restriction plays a key part because biologically, if you're insulin resistant, there's really, at least we haven't found another way, like increasing your carbs isn't going to do good. So it's the opposite. But beyond that, it's highly individualized. Uh, we work with Native American tribes. We work with truck drivers. We work with blue collar workers working for bank. Mm -hmm. Every possible, you know, age, sex, socioeconomic status, stay home moms, I don't know, shift worker dads, whatnot. So the individualization is basically to an N equals one because you can't, you know, if you are, if you are someone who drives a truck and only has access to food at highway stops, we can't tell them to go to Whole Foods, right? buy ingredients and start cooking. On the other hand, if you stay home mom, you take care of the kids and maybe the spouse or the partner, their recommendation nutritionally is very different. It may be recipes. So there's mm -hmm. a massive amount of individualization nice. needed. And then we track biomarkers on a daily basis so we can really see how your body is reacting and using that data to respond and say, hey, maybe we need to reduce the protein amount or maybe we should, whatever it is that we have to customize, we can be pretty objective based on the data that's that's coming back to us. So so that's kind of broadly how it how it works. And then of course our providers, medical providers make a medication adjustments nearly daily basis initially, especially if you're type two diabetic with bunch of drugs like insulin that have a high hypoglycemic risk. Um, but mostly it's it's the coach who's interfacing with with the member mm -hmm. as opposed to the medical doctor. So okay. that's wow. kind of a little bit of a description. <laughs> uh, small question before big mm -hmm. response. Uh, the data that you're collecting, are, are, are people wearing continuous glucose monitors? Are they pricking their fingers? Or what kind of data are you collecting on people? Yeah, good question. By default, we don't supply CGMs or continuous yeah. parameters uh, simply because of the cost. And yeah. in terms of our business model, we take we cover all the costs and then obviously we deliver and promise to deliver certain savings to our clients. And what we found, in fact, it was published last week at the American Diabetes Association scientific sessions in, in Orlando, Florida, we published uh, 10 new abstracts and, and two of them were about CGMs. And the interesting thing that we found was um, there was no improvement in health outcomes among our patients, whether we use finger brick for blood glucose or CGM. Okay. Now, of course, there's more information in CGM and yeah, I'm sure you've used, I've used, and many of our patients yeah. come in with them and it's wonderful to see the continuous right. curves, but in terms of actual results, totally. it didn't drive any, any better results. That doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. And especially if you're working with people who already have type mm -hmm. two, they're real used to it. So you don't even have to get them past mm -hmm. the, the whole finger prick fear yeah. <laughs> stage. <laughs> um, okay. Wow. I mean, okay. So zooming out a little bit, like I, one, I'm just, I'm so glad we did this interview today because I had no idea that you guys were doing that over at Verda. I am like, I seriously just want to cry listening to okay. you say that <laughs> because, you know, there's many of us, uh, from holistic, you know, functional health coaches like me to functional medicine doctors, but it's so pricey. It's like, it's mm -hmm. almost this, like, because it is like, I don't, I don't work with insurance. Like, you know, I'm just like a small operation mm -hmm. over here. And so, you know, people ask me that a lot. Like, do you take insurance? I'm like, Oh no, like you think I'm much bigger than I yeah. am, you know, it's like very small business over here. But, um, I, it breaks my heart sometimes because it it's, it's like, it almost feels like there's like this, like well, you only can, only can get better if you have money, you know, mm -hmm. and I do, I sit with that sometimes I'm like, Oh, you know, I try to make programs and more affordable things. Right. But to, to hear that, not only are you guys working with employers and insurance companies, but like you're, you know, reaching out, sending mailers, going to people saying, Hey, you can do this, you know, so it's accessible for anybody. I mean, my, my mom had type two diabetes and turned into dementia and Alzheimer's yeah. and stroke. She passed away last November, you know? And so it's I watched yeah. things like I watched that whole trajectory of like 
for information. You know, I remember as I became a coach talking about vitamin D and insulin sensitivity and she's like, Oh yeah, my vitamin D is always super low. And I'm like, Oh, like what'd they tell you? Like, I don't remember, you know, and I'm just, mm-hmm. just that kind of, it's just, just take your insulin and yeah, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, You know? And so to know that like people like my mom out there can get this level of help for yeah. free is just amazing. Thank you for yeah. coming out of your desire to <laughs> chill and doing this. It's, I can see why you did it. It's really important. Yeah. It's really cool. And just as somebody in this community, like, thank you <laughs> yeah. for doing that. Yeah. And then just to a little bit about my motivation around and how, how to think about solving this type 2 diabetes and obesity epidemic in the US and hopefully global eventually. As I became obvious to me, I would say what's driving it, and it's primarily nutrition. I before even starting Word, I I I wanted to solve it and I, I was thinking carefully, taking a step back, like, okay, how do we solve this for not like for one person or hundred, but for millions of people? Like, what is the solution? Mm-hmm. And basically where I landed was you you need three things. You need to pull three levers very hard. One is awareness. Like literally you go to a grocery store and you look at people's grocery carts. Uh, many people don't know that like drinking two liters or whatever that is, half a gallon or more than half a gallon of soda a day is, is not like nice to have. Like it's literally <laughs> going to kill you. So one is awareness. And I honestly, yeah. most people still don't know what is healthy eating, eating and what is like really bad. Like giving candy to children, you know, it's a nice thing. I grew up, that's what my parents did, but you know, it's, it's toxic. It's literally killing you. But anyways, so one is awareness. I still think food awareness and nutrition awareness, all you need to look at is the government, you know, food guidelines. It's like eat cereals some bagels and orange juice and juice for breakfast. What is that? That is hundred percent sugar. That's horrible. So one was awareness. Second one was policy. And I'm not a huge believer that the government's going to solve all, all our problems, but there are some policy decisions. Mm-hmm. Things like, what do we feed for our kids? Um, which I don't think is optimal today. So second one was policy. And my quick conclusion was awareness and policy. I hope there's someone who's doing that. I have been an entrepreneur all my life, so I'm not going to spend the next decade in DC convincing politicians. I don't know how to do that. And Mm -hmm. I, I can't do it. And I will go crazy if I try. So I sort of gave up personally the awareness and policy, and I've just tried to help others too. And then the third lever to pull to solve this problem on a massive scale, I thought, well, there's always an opportunity in a capitalistic society for new products and services. And that was kind of, hence Verda, I said, well, I think we can build a company around here. And if we create an economic engine that feeds yeah. itself, uh, it is one of the most powerful forces in the world in a capitalistic system. So that's why I personally chose Verda as a for-profit company. And then having this kind of a business model where literally there's an entity who makes money when we reverse type 2 diabetes. And that is the insurance company or your self-insured employer. And so that was kind of the broad way in which I was looking at the tools. So policy, awareness, and new products and services. And then we then we started Verda. Um, and the, so why, why, why did I want to start it? I literally just, I was so mad that, you know, like your mom, now I can't tell you how, what happened to her, and people that I've seen around, like people are suffering freaking needlessly. Like mm-hmm. 800 people die a day from diabetes in America, a day. People lose eyes and limbs. Yeah. And, you know, many doctors don't know any better. They say, oh, it's a chronic and progressive disease. Okay, you're diagnosed. Now you're on insulin. I was so mad. And I was like, we have to try to affect change on a, like a millions of people level. And so that's kind of... Nice a little bit of the, the the background context. And of course, sometimes from the nutrition community, I've heard like, oh, these guys are trying to profit off of a simple nutrition plan. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> that's not the point. I have tweeted our simple nutrition plan many times, but we still have diabetes. Like if I had solved diabetes by tweeting that eat less sugar, I would have done that, but it doesn't work like that. Like you have to work your ass off for many decades and have a model that allows scaling and helping mm-hmm. millions of people. So that's kind of the driver, mm-hmm. at least for me personally, behind mm-hmm. behind the company. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Um, 
Yeah, I think I am definitely going to let my uh, community know. Like, do you guys know what they're doing over at Verda? Did you know that they already did that? Like, you know, <laughs> like in terms of like this kind of stuff is like, mm, I'd say things that are talked about in the holistic community a lot, but like no one's actually like doing it. I didn't know you guys were already, you know, hitting it at that level. So it's appreciated. I'll send all sorts of people your way, you know, because many of us have like little specialties. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I can definitely help someone with that but i also do mindset coaching is like the biggest part and there's training yep. and they you know we do other things and so it's like i'm like note to self insulin resistance you know like especially yeah. if someone doesn't have a lot of money check and see yep. and that's what i was wondering too like suppose somebody didn't get the mailer or whatever and they're curious can, can they see how do they find out if they yeah just google verta health you'll find out okay, what's you'll figure it uh, out B I R T A V I R T A. google verta health and you know you'll stumble on a website and mm -hmm. you know there's lots of youtube videos and blog posts and our initial medical directors, Dr. Sarah Halberg, who who ran a, was a PI primary investigator in a clinical trial, she has a TEDx talk with more than mm -hmm. ten million views. So you can you can find okay. a lot of materials about Verda online by just googling. And then again, if your employer helpline covers, which hopefully is the case, then um, we can help for free. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll link that up in the show notes and also, um, check out their Instagram social media accounts too, because I noticed you guys share recipes and just all sorts of help, helpful info on there. So we'll link that up also. Um, yeah. Any, any last recommendations from your, your end of the, uh, health world changing pool? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I, I will say that, um, for well, anyone who's on a journey towards better met metabolic health, whether that's from sickness to health or health to wellness, one thing that I've been very, one of the many things I've been very inspired by, by our patients is oftentimes if one family member joins Verda as a patient, there's a very positive ripple effect, not always, but most of the time to their spouse. We've also had right. cases where uh, we hear stories where, uh, the kids have started following a lot of the guidance and guidelines that we give to the parent and the teenage kids right. lose weight and go from being completely unable to even join athletics to thriving in soccer and just heartwarming stories about parents telling who well, are our, our patients that they feel like they broke in the generational curse yeah. in obesity. And so I, I guess I would encourage anyone who is on a journey towards better metabolic health that um, speak to your people around you, obviously not in a kind yeah. of preachy way, but right. share like, hey, this is what I've done. Because that's one way that we can multiply positive impact from one to two, you know, two to four, four to eight, and uh, uh, so, so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I've noticed. And there is, there's also no better proof point and billboard for success and outcomes than a person you know and seeing them. Uh, and like yeah. we hear this from primary care doctors that we can send them 500 pages of peer reviewed outcomes from Verda and it doesn't convince a PCP primary care doctor that diabetes is reversible or whatnot. But then they have one of the 2000 patients in their panel who comes back and says, oh, I'm off of insulin, my blood sugar is down. And the primary care doctor is instantly convinced that there's a way to nutritionally reverse yeah. type 2 diabetes. Yeah. So, so I guess that's one message I would say. The power of example, and if you find a way to get healthier, um, don't be quiet about it because we need that. We need mm -hmm. the 150, soon 200 million American adults yeah. are suffering from poor metabolic health. And it's, it's just, it's a crisis, not just economic, but obviously too many human lives are ended way too short, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of suffering at the end on that 100%, road as well. 100%. Um, yeah. I mean, so well said. I've experienced firsthand, witnessed firsthand everything you're saying, you know, a, a, a big hit on the non-preachy, you know, it's like, if you want to help your family, just help yourself. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to teach anything except when they start asking, just be excited about what you're experiencing. Yeah. Just shine that light. And and that's it. And they'll be like that people I noticed, you know, tend to 
take the steps towards transformation when they're inspired more than when they're preached at, you know, preached at brings the ego out. Yeah. And it's kind of like, eh, you know, I'm good the way I am inspired. It causes people to lean in. So yeah, be, be excited, share excitedly about what you're experiencing. I think it's the best, uh, help you can be to others. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much. That was amazing. I'm so glad that on so many I'm so glad that I found out about this. I'm so glad that you guys are offering this. I will definitely be, you know, encouraging people to find out if they qualify for Verda or even just pay for it out of pocket too. Like I'd say if type two, if blood sugar, you know, that type of metabolic dysfunction is your thing, like I would I'll definitely be sending a lot of people your way. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.